This video continues an introduction to the Milky Way galaxy. In the previous video, we discussed the star counts that were done in the 1700s that showed the uh, stars were distributed around the sun in a uh, somewhat of a disk type structure, at least thin. That's the plane of the Milky Way that you see that band of light on the sky. However, those astronomers were misled because they did not understand the uh, effect of dust in our galaxy to uh, dim starlight to the point where distant stars cannot be seen over about 6,000 light years away from us using visible light. So that was corrected in the 1930s and uh, before that a little bit, but uh, 1930s it was realized the great effect that uh, dust had on uh, misleading us on distances. So we have here a uh, survey of the plane of the Milky Way galaxy, the band of light you see on the sky with various wavelengths. So we have radio, the 21 centimeter line of radio to look at uh, hydrogen, um, other just radio information, 2.5 gigahertz, and uh, a frequency that can detect molecular hydrogen, uh, infrared light, uh, getting closer to the visible, and then the visible wavelengths give us this picture that uh, perhaps you've seen in other venues, um, and then x-rays and gamma rays. So, uh, astronomers have a, a great resource with uh, many wavelengths available to study the Milky Way and they each have their particular use and we'll get to some of these others uh, later but I, I'd call your attention there is a common feature for all of these uh, images and that would be the plane of the Milky Way. There's much more material in this kind of pancake shape that we're seeing kind of uh, I won't say edge on because we're not outside the Milky Way, but we're inside the Milky Way. And if we would look around the sky and the plane of the Milky Way from start at some point, and we go all the way around the sky, 180 degrees, 360 degrees, and now we're back at the starting point that's on the left. So you, you need to imagine slicing these uh, strips and wrapping them around the sun so you get a 360 degree view of the sky and that, that's the image that's uh, being displayed for us and again all of them show this uh, concentration of material in the plane of the Milky Way uh, so many wavelengths the radio is useful to detecting cold hydrogen um, or hydrogen as a molecule uh, the infrared is useful in that it can see through the dust that's in our galaxy to a, a certain point. Um, and optical wavelengths where the stars are producing a lot of their light and x-rays and uh, gammas. And I just noticed that they don't have ultraviolet on here, but uh, there, there are, of course, satellites that can uh, take uh, images in the ultraviolet and give us information on the galaxy using ultraviolet wavelengths. But again, gamma rays, very high energetic processes are uh, uh, happening there. Down to the radio, the lower energy uh, emitters. I want to focus in on this video on the 21 centimeter line of neutral hydrogen. So this was uh, uh, proposed in the early 1940s that uh, astronomers might be able to detect the presence of hydrogen in our galaxy by making use of the fact that there's an energy difference between what we call spin up and spin down for the electron compared to the uh, direction of spin for the proton. That's a little bit dangerous to even say the word spin as the electron. Uh, it's not to be thought of as a basketball spinning or baseball spinning or beach ball spinning. Uh, the electron uh, has the property of spin without spinning. So you can uh, ask your instructor about that. But we have a situation here that the electron can be called to have spin up or spin down and there's a difference in energy of the electron for that and that difference in energy creates a wavelength of electromagnetic radiation that's in the radio spectrum with a wavelength of uh, uh, 21 centimeters. So out in the universe, out in our galaxy, um, 
there can be you know some collisions that can uh, bump the electron general collisions bump the electron to a different spin status bump it to a higher energy level and then it can drop back down in the energy level doesn't change its orbit but just changes the direction of its spin um, so if it's just out there by itself this is not a uh, a real fast event you might say but uh, just sort of probability would say that if we uh, put an atom in this high energy condition of the spins aligned for the electron and the proton uh, we could wait a hundred million years for that spin to change state but there's a lot of hydrogen in our galaxy and because there's so much hydrogen there is a noticeable uh, radio emission from this process of electrons changing their spin direction compared to the spin of the proton. So the spin of the proton stays fixed, let's say up here, and the spin of the electron flips 180 degrees, and that causes this atom to give off a 21 centimeter uh, wavelength of uh, radio emission, uh, 1420 megahertz if you want the frequency. So Radio an antennas can uh, be equipped to uh, measure this frequency. In 1951, that was that was done. Uh, hydrogen was uh, mapped out then in the following years, and still continues to be mapped out in our in our galaxy. The 21 centimeter radio line. It's very very important um, that uh, astronomers have this capability. It helps us map out where hydrogen is, neutral hydrogen, in our galaxy. So we're not mapping out H2 regions of ionized hydrogen. We're mapping out neutral hydrogen that covers a much bigger volume. The H2 regions are localized around hot stars where the hydrogen gets ionized. But the neutral hydrogen is uh, scattered throughout our galaxy. So this radio line, this emission line, uh, just as we've talked about emission lines for visible light uh, from atoms, we have this 21 centimeter emission line in the radio uh, spectrum. And as I said, it's the spin changing for the electrons, changing direction, that uh, gives this energy difference. And we get this 21 centimeter uh, radio wave being emitted. So that one's just reviewed. So the radio telescopes are set up to receive this energy. Um, if there's more radio energy in a certain direction, that tells the radio astronomer there's more hydrogen in that direction. So astronomers can get a map of um, how much hydrogen there is at various places around the Milky Way. Now, there's even a little trick coming up to give us more detailed maps than just how much hydrogen is in a certain direction on the sky. Um, but we'll get to that. So here's the 21 centimeter uh, map of, of our galaxy. Again, the disk of our galaxy is along here. We're in a barred spiral galaxy if we could look down from the top. Again, this is an all sky view. So the point over on the left would touch the point over on the right. If we would wrap this around the sun, we would have a, a, a complete view in all directions. Then we would see this line here as the band of light for the Milky Way galaxy. I should point out, you know, there's a very other, another very important uh, line on the sky, the ecliptic, where the sun, planets, and the moon keep near to this line. The sun is on the ecliptic. The planets and the moon, our moon, are close to the ecliptic. Uh, but uh, the ecliptic is, has an angle. I don't remember what it is, but the ecliptic is not the same as the plane of the Milky Way galaxy. Our solar system is tilted compared to the uh, plane of the Milky Way galaxy. And that's more trivia than useful information, so let's go to this map. Using the 21 centimeter radio information, astronomers have mapped out the location of neutral hydrogen around our galaxy. And so here's the sun at this location, and this um, 21 centimeter line is not always 21 centimeters. So think, what could cause that? Why could we get a difference in the wavelength uh, from different places, especially going from uh, towards the inner part, towards the outer part? Well, it's Doppler shift. It's Doppler shift. So astronomers get... Uh, 
another piece of information by measuring the Doppler shift of the 21 centimeter radio emission as well as the intensity where the intensity is greater there's more hydrogen and they can work out the location of this hydrogen so we're seeing really around you know, not we can't go right through the the center of the Milky Way galaxy the radio signal gets blocked but uh, if we're not going through the middle then we can see on the far side of the galaxy astronomers can detect the presence of neutral hydrogen this cold hydrogen and map out where it's clustered and it does turn out that we live in a galaxy where the hydrogen is not evenly distributed there are some places where there's more neutral hydrogen and some places where there's less and we'll see that we will call these spiral arms spiral arms where we get this greater concentration of uh, neutral hydrogen and we're going to have star formation occurring in those regions so astronomers can detect uh, the presence of neutral hydrogen they can also map out molecules uh, throughout our galaxy uh, molecular hydrogen where two hydrogens are uh, linked together in a bond um, carbon monoxide has been detected water can be detected with radio astronomy ammonia uh, carbon dioxide has been detected and many other molecules are detected with radio astronomers uh, equipment and they can map out the location of uh, of these molecules and map out the giant molecular clouds that stars form out of so radio astronomy provides very useful information the radio waves go for long distances without being uh, too greatly blocked by the dust that's in our galaxy. If you recall, visible light, we can only see about 6,000 light years away from us with visible light. The center of our galaxy is about 27,000 light years away. So with visible light, we have a very restricted view of our galaxy. The infrared can reach down into the uh, uh, see stars at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Um, and infrared can go out in these other directions as well but the radio is even more successful uh, the radio energy is not blocked as much as uh, visible light or the wavelengths near visible light so the radio astronomers provide very useful information probing the distant parts of our galaxy mapping out where the hydrogen has a, a, a high concentration then differential rotation our galaxy is not stationary our galaxy is rotating okay, we're rotating and it turns out that if you would you know, put a stopwatch on the uh, stars and gas that's uh, close to the center of our galaxy so maybe the band in here and you'd put a stopwatch on the band that's out here this material completes one orbit faster than this material so the inner uh, orbits with objects closer to the center of the Milky Way galaxy uh, complete an orbit in a shorter amount of time or if you just want to go half an orbit so if we'd have some star at the point up here and going through half of its orbit and then coming out here where the Sun is the Sun's only going to go through a fraction a big fraction but only through a fraction of what the inner material goes through so that's differential rotation. Objects closer to the center of the Milky Way galaxy complete their orbit faster than objects further away. So does that mean that the Milky Way galaxy is solid or not solid? Is it a phonograph record, a CD or a DVD spinning um, a solid disk? Is the Milky Way a solid disk? Differential rotation is observed. The material on the inner track completes one orbit before material on an outer track completes an orbit. So this inner material goes around once. This inner material goes around a fraction of its orbit. And that tells us the Milky Way is not solid. We've got individual stars, individual clouds of, uh, of gas and dust. Uh, moving around. Later we'll talk there's some funny things going on as we get more distant away from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But differential rotation, the innermost region of the Milky Way galaxy completes a rotation faster 
than the material in the outer uh, parts of the galaxy. And you might uh, just consider about what that means for large-scale structure like spiral arms in a galaxy. We'll be talking about more about that later. So here we have a, a drawing of uh, the Milky Way galaxy with kind of a bar going through the nucleus. And we have the uh, various arms named for the constellations where they're located. And here's the sun. There's the sun. Um, so I'd like you to keep reading, ask some questions in class, but that's just a continuation of our tour of the Milky Way galaxy. The 21 centimeter uh, uh, studies in radio astronomy have mapped out where cold hydrogen, cold neutral hydrogen atoms are located. And that has one way of mapping out uh, where the spiral arms are located in our galaxy. And we'll see other ways uh, later. So with that, write down some questions, ask them in class.